The video that you're about to watch is one that I am truly apprehensive to make. Today, we're going to talk about a show that I've tried to talk about in the past, but when I posted the video, I ended up getting a copyright strike, and that video never got to see the light of day. But you know what? It's been over a year since that happened, and I really feel like making this video, so I'm going to do it. I guess if you're seeing this right now, then hey, they didn't copyright strike me, and everything is all good, so yay for that. Today, we're going to look at what I consider to be one of the greatest Cartoon Network shows of all time. None other than Ed, Ed, and Eddie. This show is one that I look back on just so fondly. It holds an amazing place in my childhood, and it really just played into the part of my young brain that loved all things random. This show aired on Cartoon Network from 1999 all the way to 2009, and had a whopping 69 episodes, coming to a total of 130 segments. Just in case you've been living under a rock, or say if you never really got into the show, it's about three young boys, all who share variations of the name Edward and their love of jawbreakers. Other than that though, the three don't really have all too much in common. Eddie, the self-appointed leader of the group, is more on the deceptive and quick-tempered side of things, being more of a con artist who's after the neighborhood kids' money. Ed known as Double D, for his name having two Ds in it, is the smart, inventor, neat freak of the group, and tends to be a lot more on the nicer side. And last, but definitely not least, is Ed, the strong yet lovable dimwit of the group. Oftentimes, Eddie can be found scheming and thinking of ways to make a buck, while Double D will be found in his room, working on a new invention. All the meanwhile, Ed is just standing in the yard, pretending to be a woodpecker, but with dirt. More often than not, the group are devising plans to get money from the other kids in the cul-de-sac to buy jawbreakers. Literally every single time, problems ensue and the three are almost always humiliated in the process. I will say, though the three main characters are incredibly interesting and the way their personalities clash makes for an exciting friend dynamic, the real shining star in my opinion is the colorful cast of side characters from around the neighborhood. We have Ed's sister Sarah and her best friend Jimmy. There's Johnny 2x4 and his best friend Plank, who's just a piece of wood with paint on it. Then we have Kevin, the kind of jock bully of the three Eds. There's Naz, who most of the characters have a crush on. And of course the Kanker sisters, who are a group of three trailer park girls who all have crushes on the three Ed boys. And last, but certainly not least, we have Rolf, who's an immigrant from an unknown country just referred throughout the series as the Old Country. Rolf is, without a doubt, my all-time favorite character in this show. The way that he's portrayed is just hilarious. Rolf tends to make comments and references that are just so out of pocket and hilarious, and I love it. Like I said, Ed Ed and Eddie is one of my all-time favorite Cartoon Network shows, and it holds a special place in my childhood memories. That's why today, on our nostalgic walk down memory lane, we're going to check out an episode that gets so crazy that I'm honestly surprised that Cartoon Network aired it to children. We're looking at none other than the Season 5 episode, No Speak to Ed. This episode starts out with the lunch bell ringing at Peach Creek Junior High. Kids sit down to eat, and they're immediately interrupted by Ed, who's under the table, scooting by, collecting gum from underneath the tables, and bringing it to Double D, who has a booth set up nearby. Spice Cadet Ed has returned! Clutching at the proverbial straws, wouldn't you say? Keep hating, Rembrandt, and leave the moolah making to me! Eddie Zero G walks over to Kevin and Naz, and he tries to sell them some of their moon rocks, but his plan is cut short when Ed walks up and rips the chair out from underneath Kevin in an attempt to get gum from under the chair, angering Kevin in the process. As Kevin threatens to beat up Eddie, the Urban Rangers, Rolf, Jimmy, and Johnny walk in to deliver some packages. At that time, we learn that in International Studies class, all of the kids were assigned pen pals from all over the world, and the Urban Rangers are delivering delivering mail from the pen pals. For you, Buckethead Ed Boy. And for Yakety Yak Ed Boy. And the Nobody Home Ed Boy. Rolf must deliver this correspondence to all if Rolf is to keep the boot liquor at the faculty badge. While Double D is just over the moon about getting a letter from his pen pal, Eddie just straight up roasts his pen pal from Korea who sent him a picture in the letter. 
Meanwhile, Ed opens his package to find this old school music box that plays a little tune as a wolf chases a sheep in circles. Rolf catches ear of the sound coming from the box, and he looks rather disgruntled as he starts dripping sweat. I'm skipping to my loo, Eddie. Get up! Pardon, Rolf, Tom Fool, Ed Boy. Where did you acquire this music making doohickey? Oh, my pen pal sent it to me, Rolf. A dog has raised its hind leg on the age of nevermore! Keith Rolf, do not get involved, ill-advised Ed Boy! Yes, your pomegranate shrivel in the cold of the dark sea! <laughs> the Ed Boys are left standing there, just confused. Eddie thinks that Rolf's reaction was hilarious. Ed just kinda seems neither here nor there as he pulls out his spare lunch and it burns a hole through the floor, and Double D is just upset on behalf of Ed, contemplating reporting Rolf to the office. Meanwhile, Eddie just dismisses everything that just happened as he plans to capitalize on his pen pal, scheming to mail him some of their moon rocks and demand that he send money in return. The aim of the project is to share cultural understanding, not extort it. Observe if you will. I've prepared an in-depth essay for Gerda to help her comprehend our beloved Peach Creek way of life. <laughs> Just then, Jimmy shows up with yet another package for Ed. This time he opens it up and finds a real authentic wolf pelt. Ed seems to love the wolf pelt as he ties it around his neck. What makes you so special? I eat cereal, Eddie. The bell rings for the end of the day, and we see all of the kids race out of their classrooms and go to their lockers to gather their belongings before they head home. We then see Ed putting his pelt to good use. Ribbon, ribbon, ribbon. We cut to a flashback of Rolf being a child in the old country as he walks through a dark forest carrying a sheep. Young Rolf hears a wolf howl and he starts to panic. He runs, carrying the sheep, trying his hardest to get to safety, but he trips and this happens. Rolf storms out of the school angrily while Eddie and Double D come to check on Ed. Ed hugs Double D tight and cries, saying that Rolf beat him with an umbrella. As Double D consoles him, Eddie starts mocking Ed, but just then, Johnny shows up with a last minute letter for Eddie. Eddie greedily rips it open and a ton of money falls out and surrounds him. I'm up down, baby! Jawbreakers, here I come! Worthless in its present state. We cut on over to the candy shop where Eddie is being thrown out for trying to pay with foreign currency. After that, we see Ed hanging around outside the candy store playing wolf when a mysterious chicken with a rope tied around it pops up from under a bush. Hug a chicken! Hug a chicken! Hug a chicken! <laughs> Hurry, Eddie! Someone's absconded with Ed! Eddie and Ed follow the bush to Rolf's house. Double D finds a spigot outside of Rolf's shed that's dripping water, so he turns it off to stop the drips. When he does that, the spigot falls and a secret tunnel appears underneath them, as the two Eds fall down the tunnel and down some rickety stairs. At the bottom, they fall through a wooden door and find themselves in a mysterious underground chamber. Quake and quiver like a jellyfish, doggy doo doo, Ed boy! For in the name of the great shepherd elders, Rolf will grill your strudel until you cry like a teensy witsy baby! Slow down there, Chief! Strudel gives me gas. How about one large pepperoni? No mushrooms, double pickle! Double D climbs down a ladder, attempting to talk some sense into Rolf, but he isn't having any of it as flames erupt in his anger. Rolf explains how he's led to believe that Ed is faking his dim-witted and innocent demeanor and that he's in league with Rolf's sworn enemy, the Wolfman. Double D connects the dots, realizing that Ed's pen pal's gifts have triggered Rolf due to some trauma from his past. Oh, boo-hoo! What's Wolfgang McHarry back gonna do? Stick heels down her pants again? <laughs> At 
this point, we cut over to Rolf's shed where we see time pass as day turns to night and night turns into morning. All the meanwhile, we hear what sounds like Rolf beating the Ed boys senseless as he interrogates them, trying to get them to talk about their alliance with the Wolfman. The Ed boys fortitude is to be admired. Hi, Rolf! For heaven's sake, Rolf! This was all a great misunderstanding! Yeah! How was we to know you were such a lily-livered, gutless doormat? Just then, Johnny bursts through the door in his Urban Ranger outfit, saying that he has a letter for Double D. After he's done delivering the letter, Rolf throws Johnny out of the shed using his shepherd staff. Then, this happens. It must be a reply for my Norwegian pen pal, Gerda! Gerda? Norwegian? The Godmaker? This is odd. A feather duster! I'm sure I informed Gerda of Mother's allergy to feathers. Aha! The feather duster of tomfoolery! <laughs> Rolf is just busting up laughing, and all of the Eds are completely confused. Eddie asks Rolf what's up, and he explains... Are you so simple, head and neck as one Ed boy? Gerda the goat milker is famous for her jovial jests! It was she that sent the wolf parcels to the doo-doo Ed boy! She has made the merry Andrew of us all, yes? What? Come! We must rebut while the turnips are still hard! We cut over to Rolf, approaching a nearby mailbox with a suitcase. Inside of that suitcase is none other than the three Eds. He gives them some shaving utensils and tells them that when they arrive to Gerda the goat milker, they need to shave her legs so that Rolf can have the last laugh. Rolf, please, reconsider- Rolf, wait! Yeah! I got some Korean gas! Take it! It's yours! I can't fly to Norway. I have class in the morning. Um, guys, I have to go to the bathroom. No! Wow. There is so much for us to unpack here, guys. I want to come right out the gate and say that I love this episode. With Rolf being my favorite character, I'm naturally drawn to all of the Rolf-centered episodes. But I'm not gonna lie to you, this one was completely unhinged. This episode really went there, and I'm kind of surprised that Cartoon Network gave this one the green light. But honestly, it wasn't unhinged from start to finish. There's a lot of really funny off-the-wall humor here. First things first, that scene in the beginning, when Rolf drops off the mail with the other urban rangers, he makes a comment about how he needs to deliver all of the mail if he wants to keep the bootlicker of the faculty badge. This just had me dying. Rolf casually dropping the term bootlicker just absolutely sent me. I remember watching the show as a kid and thinking about how funny it was that the urban rangers have all of these different bizarre badges that they can earn. But honestly, I kind of want to go back and re-watch all of the Urban Ranger episodes, because if I had to guess, there's a ton more badges with jokes like this that just went right over my head when I was a kid. I'm definitely curious to see how many more I can find. Another thing I couldn't help but notice was during that scene where Ed opens up that package to find a wolf pelt, which, might I add, I do question the legality of. Like, I imagine you can most likely mail pelts to people, but I'm not 100% sure about mailing them overseas. I can't help but think that it would have some trouble getting through customs, but hey, what do I know? I've never really shipped anything internationally, but I have mailed enough records in my day to know that USPS is definitely picky about what you can and can't mail to people. But back to my original point. During that scene where Ed opens the package with the pelt, we see this poster in the background with the all-seeing eye on it that says, The principal is watching. This had me questioning everything I thought I knew about this show. The poster itself being a reference to George Orwell's book 1984 and the phrase, Big Brother is watching you, which references how the government monitors and controls its citizens by suppressing the will of the populace. Now, I've seen literally every episode of this show. I recall that in the earlier seasons, we mainly see the kids' adventures around the cul-de-sac and the immediate area. It wasn't until the later seasons that we were introduced to Peach Creek Junior High and we see the kids going to school. It definitely added another layer to this show and it added a bit of complexity to its rather simple, straightforward premise. However, 
I've noticed that if you look for details in the school, you can find some really weird posters and in some cases, propaganda such as this poster right here. It's one of those weird things where as a kid, I would see the school and pay it no mind. I'd just accept the fact that this is where they go to school and that's the end of that. But as an adult, I see this kind of stuff and I can't help but question what really goes on at that school. Moving on from there though, we gotta talk about Rolf and his trauma. This episode is one that really makes you empathize with Rolf for what he went through as a child, but also it makes you question his mental stability in general. Just the sight of that music box with the little wolf on it sent Rolf off the deep end. Furthermore, that pelt that Ed got was just the icing on the cake. That sent Rolf into such a severe state of panic that he did some really heinous and questionable things. Not only did he blatantly attack Ed in the middle of the hallway at school and make him cry, but he even went as far as kidnapping Ed and that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg. After kidnapping him, Rolf literally takes him to this secret underground dungeon and holds him captive in a cage. Like, straight up, this literal child has a secret dungeon complete with a throne and pillars of flame that flare up with his emotions and anger. I can't help but wonder how the hell Rolf had all of this set up. Like, that extremely deep pit with the stairs alone is something that I feel a team of construction workers would probably take a good amount of time to complete. That's not even considering the full-blown dungeon that was built, complete with a ladder from the upper platform and a full-blown staircase leading up to the throne. I know from previous episodes that Rolf has some extreme strength and a very intense work ethic. I mean, we've seen him straight up dig a full-blown massive pit for him and Eddie to fight over. But like, this is some next level stuff right here. I know this is kind of a bizarre reference that a good chunk of you guys might not get, but it definitely gives me Mr. Pickle's doghouse kind of vibes. If you get that reference, let me know down in the comments, please, because you are my kind of people. On top of that though, if the dungeon imprisonment wasn't enough, Rolf literally took the Eds into his shed and straight up tortured them. Double D and Eddie were damn near crucified as they were tied to those giant shovels and just kind of left there. Meanwhile, Ed is full-blown being tortured with dunking, but instead of dunking his head in water to simulate drowning, Rolf is dunking his head in like oatmeal or some kind of slop, which I'd imagine is almost worse than water. Like, at least when your head is dunked in water, it'll all come off when you're pulled out, but oatmeal is just gonna like stick to your head and possibly in your nose and mouth and eyes, causing you a deprivation of your senses and likely taking away your ability to breathe. Not to mention the sounds we heard all night. It sounded like he was beating them senseless in there. I mean, this children's cartoon literally portrayed these kids being kidnapped and tortured by one of their friends. And Cartoon Network just let it fly like it was water off the duck's back. It was a different time though, and a different generation. I grew up watching this, and I grew up fine, so there's that. However, I do have to point out, what the hell is up with Johnny? He walked in on the Eds being straight up tortured and didn't even really bat an eye. I mean, he shot Rolf a weird look, but like, other than that, he totally just acted like this was completely normal. But like, icing on the cake, Rolf threw Johnny out of the shed, and what did Johnny do? I don't know, but he definitely didn't get help. Like, you'd think if you witnessed that, you'd probably get an adult at the bare minimum, or maybe like, call the cops or something, I don't know. But of course, no, Johnny just accepted what was happening and didn't even question it. That right there made me question the Urban Rangers an awful lot. Like, they're a close group united with a single cause, so they have each other's backs, I'd imagine. Did Johnny not say anything just because he's absent-minded and didn't think to? Or did he not say anything because as Urban Rangers, he's supposed to have Rolf's back no matter what? It honestly made me watch back and second-guess that look that Johnny shot at Rolf when he walked in. Was that really a look of confusion and questioning Rolf's motives? Or was that like a secret code look telling Rolf that Johnny won't say anything about what he saw? Who knows, but I do have to take a moment to question the ending of this episode. When Double D opens his package and finds a feather duster, Rolf claims it to be the feather duster of Tom Foolery, noting that Gerda the Goat Milker is a very prominent and well-known jokester from Norway. Now, right out the gate, that tells us that Rolf might be from Norway, considering that he knows who Gerda is, and if he isn't, there's a good chance that he's from one of those Scandinavian countries in that region of Europe. But aside from that point, in all reality, what are the odds of this being true? Like, really, what are the odds that Double D's pen pal Gerda was sending the wolf stuff to Ed? Where would Gerda even have gotten Ed's information to send it to him? And like, how would Gerda know who Rolf is? How would she know that he's got trauma relating to wolves? 
You're telling me that she knew all that somehow and plotted all of this just to prank him and the Eds? It sounds highly unlikely to me. However, the only variable that makes me question if that's all valid would have to be the feather duster of tomfoolery. Double D himself said that he told Gerda that his mother is allergic to feathers, so he has no idea why she would send him a feather duster. So maybe, just maybe, Rolf is right and all of this is a big joke? Who knows, but I gotta ask, what do you think? Do you think Rolf is right? Was Gerda pulling a fast one on them? Let me know in the comments down below, I always love seeing your guys' feedback. If you enjoyed this video, do me a huge solid and drop a like, and maybe share it with a friend, and as always, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.